do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell ha 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 So, this is the wasp hole, huh? Oh yes! You have been spirited away into a realm of darkness and dread! Oh good, good. Because uh, for a second there I thought it was just a box on top of my head with an iPod taped inside. No, it is not true! I did not put a box with an iPod taped inside on your head. It's bullshit! I did not! Now, now put your hand in this bowl of eyeballs. Alright, that's it. Ah! Ah! No cheating! No cheating! You're just a chicken! A cheep 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 cheep! Whatever. Let's get this over with. Put up the damn title card already. That's right. It's Rockula. Move over, Alice Cooper. Take a dirt nap, Rob Zombie. There's a new undead rocker on the scene. He's a vampire that's out to save the love of his afterlife from an evil curse by doing the only thing an immortal creature of the night can do. Rocking out. So our movie opens with our main character, Ralph. Yes, Ralph the Vampire. Hey, good news! We found someone with a lamer vampire name than Jasper and Harpo combined. So we learned that, like many late bloomers, Ralphie's been spending the last couple centuries living with his mother, played by Tony Basil. You know, oh Mickey. Oh, I always forget. Do you also forget not to dress like a vacuum-sealed spiral-cut ham? Um, I've always meant to ask you, how do you put your makeup on? Practice! Well, nice to see that vampires don't have reflection in this movie. Except for Ralph, who has a magic reflection with a mind of its own. That cheers up Ralphie whenever he's feeling down. Because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Is that a new retainer? Yeah, it hurts like heck. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this legend thing is tough. Let's take a moment and reflect. Reflect! Get it? Mirror reflect! God, I kill myself! Reflect. Real funny. Sometimes I really hate that guy. What am I saying? He's me. Guess that means I hate myself. Why am I confused? Huh, so he's one of those vampires that can read my thoughts. Change settings to Ralphie's favorite bar to set up more ground rules for what vampires in this film do and don't do. Vampires are so misunderstood. Well, you gotta admit they got a bloodthirsty reputation. Hey, do I look bloodthirsty? Can't stand the sign of blood, I swear. I faint. What about garlic? I cook with it all the time. It's good for colds. Did you know that? So why Woody Allen's Dracula tries to drown his sorrows in booze, Mo the bar hack here decides to drown the audience in backstory. Let me see if I can get this straight. Around the middle of the 16th century, you... 17th, right? Right. Whenever. A long time ago. You met this girl, you fell in love, but there was a problem, she had a boyfriend. A pirate. A pirate? Pirate. Whatever. Now, she loved you, right? So you were gonna slip off, get married, when old Pegley finds out, has a shit fit and comes after you. Pissed as hell. I just established his mental state. So there's a fight. Pegleg loses his sword, and what's her name gets killed by a blow to the head with a hand bone. Mona. Her name is Mona. Whatever. You tried to save her, but what could you do in the face of 20 pissed off pirate friends of Peglegs who are going to turn you into bat meat and so you beat it? Hey, you know what makes exposition easier if you can include a good flashback sequence? The Bloody Mary I ordered 15 minutes ago. Chop chop! Whatever. Since she was killed before you could fulfill your preordained lack. Before he could give her that final, fatal kiss and turn her into a vampire. Whatever. She is now reincarnated every 22 years until you two can get it right, right? Right. And so tomorrow you are going to meet her as you've done every 22 years. You'll fall in love. And unless you save her, this crazed pirate with a rhinestone peg leg will kill her. On Halloween. Everybody got that? What are you going to do? 
I'm gonna do what I should have done years ago. I'm gonna lock myself in my room and avoid this whole thing. Man, that dude so got the blues. What the? Is that Bo Diddley, the rock and roll great? What the hell are you doing in this Transylvania turd? Run for it, man! Besides, the black guy always dies first. So anyway, Ralphie walks out the front door and immediately gets hit by a car. Why do I have the feeling that he's the kind of vampire that would accidentally kill himself by swallowing a toothpick? Being undead, he just pops right up. But is sickened when he realized that the driver is the reincarnation of his internal love and for some reason the chick from Ghost World. And naturally, Mona is upset that Ralph would even consider letting her run him over at 50 miles per hour. What have happened if you hadn't jumped out in front of my car? I hope for your sake my gears had crashed. Just forget you ever saw me, okay? Because the next thing you know, we're going to go out on a date, we're going to fall in love, and then some crazy pirate's going to peg you with a ham bone. Man, what people will do to avoid swapping insurance info. I'm flying away! Slap, 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 slap. And within the confines of the gas station bathroom, we are treated to yet another nightly affirmation with Ralph's reflection. I left so she doesn't get involved with me. She doesn't get involved with me. We don't fall in love. She doesn't die. Get it? It's about this, Mr. Wise Guy. This happens every 22 years, so that means in the last 400 years I have met fallen in love and lost Mona 14.5 times. This time, no way, forget it. That's right. Forget it. Just forget the fact that we are the oldest living virgins walking the planet. What are you talking about? You're the biggest slut I know. Every time I see you with a different girl. Oh, they mean nothing to me, Ralph. It's Mona. I want you to get Mona. That means I get out of this crazy mirror thing. It's like a prison in here, Ralph. Everything's backwards. I knew it. I knew it. This is about you. This is always about you. Wrong, Ralph Alpha. It's about you. Because any way you look at it, she's got two weeks till she bites the big one. Why'd you play that random chord? I don't know. Something just told me to. So while Mona is contemplating her incident with Tall, Dark, and Raving, she's interrupted by Thomas Dolby, playing Stanley. Her, well... Did somebody say accident? Yeah. We had an accident. Just uh, set it up over there. What kind of an accident? I have my equipment damage, I hope. You know, I've got a hell of a deal on this stuff. When you're working with a guy like me, that's what we're talking deals. Let me just show you this little gizmo. This is the most amazing device. It samples anything from babies crying to dogs barking. Hey, what's the matter with this thing? It wasn't this that got broken, was it? Broken? In the accident. Stanley, it's not broken. Besides, it was a car accident. They're trying to rehearse. Car accident? Nobody uh, killed, I hope. <laughs> Hit it, boys. It's like they couldn't settle on what kind of stereotype they wanted this guy to be. So they harvested all the 80s movies and stitched them together in one giant Franken douche. Oh yeah, this is where we find out that the Red Cross is part of a government front to give vampires a steady supply of blood. And in exchange, the vampires- Oh, well, who the hell am I kidding? It's just another stupid throwaway joke. Then we're treated to a scene that easily snatches away the coveted creepy mother-son relationship award from the Bates, as Ralph walks in on his mom in the bathtub with her new best friend. Then they all make small talk. Like he didn't just walk in on a black wee man clam diving in his mother's cavern. Make like the book and run away, Ralph! Oh, thank God. I should be wondering where that mirror girl came from, but I'm just too relieved that those sounds weren't coming out of Ralph's mom. Then we finally get a flashback in confusing music video dream form, as pirates interrupt one of Mona's concerts and Ralph has to watch helplessly. Damn it, where are those ninja bodyguards we hired? I can't stop pooping! 
Um, were, were we supposed to fight or something? A, a little direction would be nice. Pigs? It was supposed to be pig's blood. I didn't finish the book. You stopped reading after the word pigs? That wasn't even the end of the sentence. So now Ralph wakes up from his NyQuil hallucination, double determined to find Mona and save her life this time. You're gonna go out in the sunlight. I'm protected. So much like the film's credibility, Ralph tosses himself out the window and begins his search. But wait, it's been one whole minute since we had a wacky talking to your own reflection scene. I wonder if, uh... <laughs> Ralph, would you look at the size of this? Oh, Christ, would you put that thing away? So the Saren dipsticks luck out and find the club Mona is performing in, where it turns out that the drink minimum is really just a suggestion of how drunk you should be to enjoy the act. <laughs> nice to see you again. I like your bars. Yeah, I say that Ralph looks like a dork wearing his gray suit in a nightclub, but he still blends in better than DJ Coleslaw, and for some reason the Finnish albino pimp they keep cutting to. Disregard the females in a car currency, yeah. So anyway, Ralph finds Mona after her performance, who finds his obvious stocking charming. Who are you? Well, I told you, I'm Ralph. No, I mean, wh what do you do? Are you a musician? Yes. Do you have a band? Or do you play by yourself? Um, yes. You are very strange, Ralph. You ain't a woofing. <laughs> Mona, darling, I was... <laughs> okay, what possible excuse could you have for dressing like that? <laughs> then, for no reason whatsoever, the club owner decides to kick Ralph out. Party, what's this? Ouch! Bounce him. But that's not enough to stop Ralph from getting all his friends at the bar together to start a band. No, no, this is gonna be really funny. I know, that totally sucked. Starting a rock band? A vampire in a rock band. What are you gonna call it? Rockula? Rockula! Rockula. His second choice was going to be Filthy Bathroom. Whatever. So apparently once you choose a name for your band, you're instantly good enough to play at the same nightclub that you got kicked out just the night before. is just stuff he's done in the movie already. What's next? Is he gonna tell everyone what he had for lunch yesterday? Orders, Chinese takeouts, some chow mein and a bowl of steamed rice, please. Thank you. Well, I guess everyone was really impressed that he was able to put his Twitter message board to music, including Mona. But the fact that Ralph and her are getting closer is not sitting well with Stanley, who decides to go to the psychic for help. She thinks she loves you, but she really loves you, Stanley. Really? Yes, but she is under his spell. Spell? Spell, Stanley, for this is no ordinary man. He is a vampire. A vampire? A vampire, Stanley. It is your destiny to save Mona. Yes, but how can I do it? You must kill her, Stanley. Yes? Yes, 
And then she will be all yours. I could mount and stop her. She will be your sleeping princess. Yes, yes, I see it. I can freeze her cryogenically. Oh, I suppose they will wear. She'll be mine. All mine forever. When do I do it? It must be done on Halloween. Right. But there is one catch, though. You must dress as a pirate. A pirate? A pirate with a rhinestone peg leg. A rhinestone peg leg? A rhinestone peg leg. And you must dispatch her with a ambon. Ambon. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so I need to dress up like a pirate and kill my ex-girlfriend with a pig bone so I can freeze her carcass. That sounds perfectly sane, Psychic, who covers her face for reasons we should in no way be suspicious about. Cut to Club Hell, where... what the hell indeed? I swear, the first time I saw this, I thought it was a totally different band. But can you blame me? It's nothing but jump cuts, crotch shots, and... Ugh. Oh, say it isn't so, Bo. That better be Bear Mace. And so you can tell that it's true love, because Mona is still willing to be seen in public with him. Why, they even share the ultimate symbol of affection, frolicking in the rain. But all of a sudden it turns into a love song. And it's the weirdest thing yet. I mean, first he goes all Edward and leaves her, only to come back from the opposite side. Then he gets hit by a car driven by Mr. Magoo because it doesn't even stop for six blocks. Then they get lost and wander around a hobo yard. Ralph gets beaten up. Mona gets led around by these little bum girls. And then they meet up again and the bum girls are happy even though they're still poor. And they just fade away. Wow. What was that? How am I supposed to know? I don't know, but it was definitely beautiful. No, it wasn't. It was weird. Now walk away. You get back here and explain. Wait, what the? Oh, wait. It really was a music video. Huh. I, I guess that was a little clever. Uh, a props movie. But not one to be outclassed. Stanley has a video debut of his own. Just take a look at our new line in designer headstone. Secretary forgets to remind you to bring flowers. The XK2000 is perfect for those with a busy lifestyle. Just 50 cents brings an all-natural floral surprise. Mm, just smell those chlamydias. Get out! That was the best bit! It's true. Family, I have been working my entire life for tonight. And you come and make a joke out of it? Mona! You! You did it to me, you fiend! fiend, 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 fiend. What? What was that? Me, you fiend. Fiend, 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 fiend! Why the echo? Why anything before it? That's it, movie. You've dumped your load. You can't show me anything more random than that. Introducing! The fabulous, the incomparable, and the sexy, Miss Phoebe!
my friends and jamming is what I'll do. And I'll jam the house, I'll jam it down on you. My mom's kind of strange. Well, since the night can't get any weirder, Ralph decides to tell Mona that he's really a vampire. But unfortunately, she doesn't believe him. Hey, fine, fine. Okay, I didn't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. Now watch close. I haven't done this in years. I'm not very good at it, so bear with me. Hi. Meh. I mean... Maybe you would have gotten a rise out of me if this came before Tim Burton's version of Betty Page. But Mona is freaked out by this and runs off into the night. And now it's the part of the movie where Ralph and Mona are sad. They lie in bed and cry and walk the streets at night like a man against the world. But as Mona slowly realizes that she truly does love Ralph, Stanley prepares for his Halloween night murder. Madam Benoit, is that you? Hello, Madame Benoit. I've got everything ready, the liquid nitrogen, everything. All I need is... Wow, real rhinestones. Um, that's still the pig leg, right? You remember, before midnight. Oh my gosh, that reveal would have been so much more dramatic if we could have seen any of it. I'm really worried. I haven't seen her for days. And Ralph, I haven't seen him either. My little butt. I'm back! Whatever. So now the gang has to split up and solve the mystery of the rhinestone pirate. God damn it! Meanwhile, someone needs to entertain the audience. Luckily, everyone knows once you take the thick glasses off of someone, they instantly become sexy pop stars. Well, anyway, the important thing is that Mona shows up. And the two have a beautiful on-stage reunion. Unfortunately, Stanley kills the lights and swoops down to carry Mona off. Damn. Hey, Ralph, what's a good word? You save her yet? So Stanley's got her and they've disappeared. The typical. What's typical? That the damsel's in distress and you're caught sleeping at the gate behind the eight ball a day late and a dime short. Sometimes I really hate you. Oh, thanks a lot. And I'm just going to tell you where she is. Where? Where? Where is she? But now I'm not going to. Tell me where is she? Not until you apologize. I apologize! Alright, go out that door, you make a left, there's some access stairs. Wait a minute, how could he have possibly known that? He didn't know where she was before. That isn't Deus Ex Machina, that's cheating. And why the hell would he tease him with the information? Doesn't he want to save Mona just as bad as Ralph? Everything's backwards! So anyway, Ralph finds Stanley and the two have an epic battle. <laughs> Piles of boxes around! Honestly! Oh, don't you talk about my boxes! I like boxes! And as the two fight, Ralph sees this as a perfect opportunity to work through some of his issues. No one ever believed in me! I never even believed in myself! I've been sent to by your self-pity! I was such a weakling! I couldn't even take a cold! The only person who believed in me was my mother! God bless her! If it weren't for that woman! Oh, Ralph! I'm sorry! Madame Benoit? This is Levy. Madame Benoit? Whoa, don't you? I thought I was doing the right thing, but now I know I was wrong. You mean you were behind this the whole time? You were my little boy. I didn't want you to leave home. Now I know you're all grown up. You're in this together! Die, vampire scum! Ow! Ow! That was my mother you just boned. <laughs> Nothing can stop me now. Stanley then turns his attention to Mona, leaving Ralph no choice but to use his ultimate weapon, somehow making Stanley fall back into his own cryotube. And since it's past midnight, the curse is broken, even though it wasn't a curse, just Ralph's mom. 
But Ralph and Mona decide to leave the Volturi out of this, forget about all those arranged murders, and have a big hug. Then Ralph and Mona live happily ever after. But wait, what about Ralph's reflection? Well, instead of a mushy, I gotta go now, Ralph, but I'll always be in your heart, the reflection just gets bored, breaks out of the mirror, and goes on stage dressed as Elvis. And that's the end of the movie. What else can I say? I mean, this is the kind of bizarre crap you find on 2 in the morning when you can't sleep, and you wonder whether you dreamt half of it or not. No, it is not a dream. It is real. And now it will haunt you in your nightmares. What are you talking about? I love this movie. And I planned this the whole time. Go on. Well, you see, I bought some life-giving elixir online. I was trying to get a copy of the Necronomicon, but I was outbid by some chick. I purposely left the leaky bottle with my old Goosebumps collection, knowing it was bound to bring something to life. Go on. Then after I used the dematerializer to get rid of whatever I conjured up, I spent an entire episode talking about how even a monkey could kick a ghost's ass. Go on. I knew if I attempted fate enough, it would attract the attention of one of you keepers, and you'd try to punish me with the most convoluted and bizarre Halloween movie ever made. A movie that I have been looking all over for. I mean, sure it's bad, but that doesn't mean it's not entertaining. Tony and Thomas are insanely energetic. And you gotta love the last death moans of the 80s that is the soundtrack. And it's just an awesomely weird holiday movie. You mean... That's right. I have used you, and you are the fool. Yeah, not again! Ah, what the world, what the world, what the world. What a twist!